Hi, and welcome to part two of our camera special. What we're looking at in this part is your accessories to go with your new camera, your DSLR, your, your new compact camera, the things you can get which are gonna give you that better quality shot or that, that better experience. So without further ado, let's cut to look at some cool new things you can play with. So the first thing that Toby's got to show us is something that I think is absolutely amazing. I've seen the little ones of these and you know they're really cool, but this is an amazing thing to have for a DSLR. And it's the Joby Gorilla Pod. And it, it looks massive, but it weighs nothing. And I'll let Toby explain what he uses it for. This is a tiny little tripod, which can be used in many scenarios, whether you're taking a photo on a timer, or like I use it for the most, I use it to film my time lapses and stuff like that. It's great for just setting up a shot absolutely anywhere. If you sat, for example, on a pier yeah. and there's um, your banister next to it, nowhere that you can set up a decent tripod, just clip that to your banister. It ain't going anywhere. And the flexibility of that, I've, I've seen the little ones used the other way up so you can actually hang them off of things so you get a complete different shot to what you normally achieve and when you're trying to do things like vlogging mobily and you you want to just you're in a hotel room or do something you want to fire something off you're not going to carry around a really heavy tripod and you may be you know you're on the go this is an ideal little thing okay it's not going to solve all your problems in terms of the quick fixes it's ideal and it holds that um, DSLR really well. It doesn't seem to wobble or anything like that when you're no, using it. No, um, One of the ways I tested it was I um, I attached it to my stair banister um, uh, sideways like that to see whether it would move anywhere and no movement whatsoever. Absolutely quality piece of kit. And the key thing with a, obviously a DSLR tripod is you've got faith in it because you're putting a lot of money on the end of that tripod and if it's going to look like it falls, it's going to fall over or it's going to crack or something's going to go wrong with it you're not going to do it but this gives you ultimate faith straight away and there seems to be there's nothing you wouldn't want to do with it you wouldn't go oh actually i wouldn't want to risk that okay if you had a huge telephoto lens it's not going to work but that's not designed to support this it's designed to support just your dslr body and a nice little little lens to go with it very nice item so the second piece of tech we've got for you is the movo films hd 3000 now this is an incredible piece of kit if you're filming action or movement, anything needs to be fluid. And I'll let Toby explain why, but just looking at this piece of kit, it's a monster, but you're gonna love it. First of all, if you ever wanna test your patience, buy one of these. <laughs> I think with any, any of these uh, sort of steady cam things that you're gonna buy, uh, anything on the market, it's gonna be uh, tricky and fiddly to set up. Um, because you've got to get the balance and the weight absolutely right to the camera that you're putting on top of that, even to the degree of whether you've got the lens cap on or not. It's this is, super high yeah, detail. This is not something you're going to just pick up and go, I'm going to use this. It's something you're going to have to think about and think what the shots you're going to use it for before you can just grab it and go. Absolutely. Off we go. Yeah, it took me three hours to set this one up for my camera. But it looks like it was worth, it, <laughs> worth, worth the effort. Absolutely. So your, your DSLR fits on top of it like that. And then the idea is that the yeah. unit takes up all of the motion and movement from you filming at a pace. So if you're like me and you've got really unsteady hands, you might want to get one of these anyway because my footage is always like I've taken speed or something. So this is ideal. So in terms of the actual weight of the unit, you said it's quite heavy, isn't it? It's not, it's not the lightest thing in the world. Fair bit, I'm struggling right now. But obviously you've got, <laughs> you, you have the weight of the, the camera itself, but then you've also got a counterbalance which weighs the same amount as the camera. So straight away you're, you're doubling your normal camera load. And then you've got all the gyros and the extra bits inside it, which make it a steady bit of footage. But in terms of the flexibility of the platform and what you could do with it, if you wanted to film you know, you're at your extreme sports, your skateboard and that kind of thing. This is what you're gonna need. You wanna make yourself, you know, your own movies. You're not gonna be able to do that carrying the camera yourself unless, you know, you're super steady, which I don't think anyone's gonna be enough to make great footage. So this is ideal for that. And to totally show you the range of motion you can get out of one of these, just. And if you look at that camera, that is completely flat the whole time that's happening. It's not rocking, it's not tilting, it's just flat. Which means that all the footage you put out from that is just gonna be perfect. If weight is an issue for you as well, there is um, there are several 
accessories you can buy for these to make it a lot more comfortable to use. Um, so like for this, you can get an accessory that goes in the end, which um, is a strap that goes down your forearm, which you then take more of the weight on your whole arm rather than holding the whole unit on your hand like that, which as you can see, my hand is straining already. Um, and you can also get a chest mount as well, which takes the weight of it and then you can control it with some other controls. So depending on the, obviously the time that you're going to be filming for it, it's all about making sure you balance that correctly. Because if you if you are going to be filming for several hours and you're doing like a you know, little feature film or a YouTube film that you're making, you're going to want some kind of rigging outfit to hold it because you're going to end up either dropping it and damaging your camera or just hurting yourself and have a dead arm for the rest of the day. So the final part of this special, we're going to talk about lenses. Now, when you buy yourself a new Canon DSLR, they come with a kit lens like this one, most of them come with the same one to be honest, which is the 18 to 55 and that's the autofocus with stabilizer. Now that's the lens I'm using to record this, it's a, it's a very decent lens for an entry lens, but if you're looking to do really high quality footage or something specific, you're going to need to change that lens out. Now Toby's done that on his 700D, so let's have a look at the lens he's using and what the difference is between that and the kit lens. So the lens that I bought is a Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter uh, f 1.4 to 5.6 uh, wide angle lens. I just want to start off that I love Sigma lenses after using this now. It's a fantastic piece of kit. You can feel the build quality as soon as you pick up your camera um, and the images that you can get from it are so crisp and the range of light levels of which you can then manipulate is absolutely fantastic. Obviously the first thing you'll notice is it's got a much larger aperture on the actual outside of the lens. If you compare that to the kit lens, you can straight away see this is a 58mm and that's a 77mm. So you can see straight away the quality, you're getting more light into that lens. So it's going to give you a much better, much sharper image at the end of it. And it works really well for video, doesn't it? It's, it's ideal for video as well as stills. Yeah, as we said before with the, uh, the Steadicam mount, it's often recommended that you use a wide angle lens to film from a Steadicam mount. So you've got the, the range of image stabilization that you can, can then manipulate in After Effects and stuff yeah. like that as well. So we've both noticed only one negative with this Sigma lens when we've been using it today. And what would you say that is? The noise of the autofocus. And I'll give you a quick example. So it may not sound like a lot, but if you've got a camera mounted microphone like I've got, that I'm using here, all you're gonna hear is that, that noise as it goes around. Obviously because of the quality of the image, it's, it's doing that, that nice mechanical movement. And it's making sure that it gets a really sharp focus. But if you're doing videos, you're gonna to wanna to put on manual focus and, and suffer through the learning how to use manual focus properly. But again, if you're gonna look for additional lenses for Canon, go for Sigma, you know, the Canon lenses are lovely, but you're not gonna beat the quality of that lens. And you can feel that with just how light this lens is compared to the quality of the Sigma lens. This, this feels almost like a toy in my hand. I've even forgot I've holding it for most of this video. Whereas that, you know, you can feel it's a bit of a beast in your hand. So Sigma lenses, a free endorsement, please. <laughs> so that concludes our crossover and our two part review of cameras and camera accessories. If you're looking to get into vlogging or you wanna make videos, why not comment on this video or hit us up on Twitter and we'll have a discussion about what we do and see if we can help you and you can help us. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Tech Helix and he's been Toby Kirk. See you next time. <laughs>